How's life been? Yeah, life's been busy. You know how it'd be. Uh, I'm going to be a dad in March next year, so we do not know the gender or anything else, but I'm excited when baby is conscious. Obviously, it's still going to be an exciting time having uh, baby, but also baby. I already have uh, less and less time every day, it feels <laughs> With all the with all the stuff that I'm always working on, I think I think it'll end up making me probably even more chill because I'll actually have like something to do aside from work. Because right now, like I'm just a workaholic and I'm at home alone, so all I can really do is just work on videos or hang out with the dogs or take them walk for a walk and stuff. I'll, I'll hopefully be like so tired and so like exhausted from taking care of child that it'll be like. Oh, I, I don't have any time in my day to worry about like stupid, trivial YouTube things anymore. <laughs> and I can just focus on like making good content, which is what I'm kind of trying to do. Like, I, I know I keep saying, oh, I've been doing this for like a year or two where I like trying to kind of more come into my own, but even more so now, like the video I just posted about the fear of the spotlight. I was completely unfiltered and just was myself and not worrying about what people thought and stuff. And just, and there's this thing that goes on behind the scenes, I think with every YouTuber where, I've talked about this before, but I'll talk about it briefly, where basically it's like, okay, so there's the videos that I wanna make and then there's the videos that people actually respond to because YouTube is used to seeing this specific type of video from you and so it's the video that it pushes. Like with my trove videos versus when I play random little games. When you play random little games, YouTube is just like, oh, nobody's watching this, so we're not gonna push this. And uh, I, I was watching um, another content creator that I regularly watch the other day, and I think they put it best where they said like, old YouTube used to be that uh, uh, it would bring people to your channel and be for the channel, but now YouTube is for the viewer. So it'll be like, oh, you're not interested in this? Well, how about you watch this instead? But there's a huge uh, disconnect between that and how the platform works and uh, me thinking, oh, am I just out of touch? Are my videos that bad kind of thing, you know? So long story short, I'm just saying like, there's all these inner demons that I'm always dealing with and I feel like more so than ever, like I'm kind of pushing them to the side and just not caring anymore. It's like, whatever, man. Even if I end up getting, going back down to like 100 views, it's like, so what? I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Well, I could either be doing a job that pays more and I'm miserable, or I could just be you know, doing this. And then I ask the hard question of, am I enjoying this? Which granted, you know, this is all conclusions and stuff that I ended up coming to like a couple years ago and why I kind of started to reform like where the channel was going. But I kind of feel like I hit a bit more of a breakthrough recently where it's like even more so I don't give an F you know, like I'm obviously still going to try and not swear as much just because the platform itself doesn't really like that. And, you know, when I'm playing Trove, I got to try and understand, well, you know, younger audience members still watch this game and junk. So but when it comes to other games, <clears throat> if I think it's funny, I'm going to do it. There, there's two main things that ended up going on that had this thought process. I kind of realized that I was living in a bubble by only consuming YouTube content like Usually whenever I end up watching stuff, it's when the wife's home and we're watching something on Netflix or whatever, right? Um, but that's, you know, that's different than the stuff that I would consume all by myself. And when I'm chilling with myself, I'm just watching YouTube videos and junk like that. But then it's like, oh, it goes into like one very specific bubble versus I've been trying to like purposely branch out more and watch um, comedians. Now, I'm not going to be an alpha rad where I, you know, pretend that I'm a comedian because I make funny YouTube videos or anything like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of funny sometimes in my own weird, psychotic way. And so my point being is I just started watching comedians and I don't know, it just made me start feeling a lot better about myself. It was like, oh, right. But it also, you know, something I remember learning a long, long time ago, like when I was a teenager is when I was watching all these regular like comedy shows and stuff, that's what like, it naturally just makes you quicker and more reactive. And so I've been purposely trying to watch like a lot more like improv and, um, uh, you know, comedians that I watched like a long time ago, like Conan and stuff, which I didn't even know, like now he's got a podcast and stuff. And some of those videos have me in tears. Anyways, long story short, it's like I've been trying to like 
almost consume that content with a purpose rather than just zoning out and being a zombie and watching whatever I feel like. Because I know if I just keep watching these smart people, I will naturally become a smarter person. <laughs> Obviously with the IQ of a rock, but still, you know, it at the very least, I can be a little bit more re reactive and responsive and quicker with my um, thought process because jokes in general and my limited experience with joking is, um. You know, it's almost like having a vault where you just let your mind go racing and then you kind of pick apart like all these specific things where it's like, oh, I think this would be funny or, oh, you know. And I think a lot of the reason why that's been so difficult for me to achieve over the many years is because my YouTube life is pretty, um, pretty sheltered when you think about it. Like, you know, all my friends are online, so I don't really go out and I'm not nearly as active as I like used to be back in the day, you know, why I'd be like going out all the time. And I mean, you know, there's there's a point to that. OK, whatever, that's fine. But it's uh, it's the idea of having and sharing life experiences. And I realize like when it comes to doing YouTube stuff, it's like, damn, dude, like as far as life is concerned, the only experiences that I really have are when uh, the wife and I go on trips and stuff like that. And then it always ends up taking me a while to kind of come back into being myself and being more like, uh, I guess, like outgoing or <laughs> in most cases when we're taking trips, uh, being able to tell people, get out of my effing way. That stands for fruit roll up uh, for you younger audience members. It, I, I, I guess the real bottom line is because I'm going to be a dad, I'm starting to take it more seriously by not taking it more seriously. It's a conundrum, but hopefully that makes sense. And then the second side of things and why I just decided, uh, you know, that I needed to start actually like doing something about this is uh, the Internet is toxic and I hate it. But then you when you realize like broad strokes here, there's like very bottlenecked, like fine tuned area where this toxicity thrives, like with, uh, you know, Twitter and all that stuff like the, this cancel culture has gotten out of hand. And because I'm on these platforms so much, you know, because I'm trying to manage my channel and all of this crap, it, it naturally just kind of got to the point where I didn't realize I was consuming more of this content than I wanted to. And so a long story short, I'm just deciding, OK, you know what, I'm just going to like stop listening to this negativity and just focus on like the good stuff and just be like, you know, watch the videos that I want and, uh, you know, just have my opinion on things, regardless of what I think other people say or want. Take, for example, Black Myth Wukong. You know, this game's blowing up, right? Everyone's like, oh my God, this game's so good. And this is, you know, this has a point. This is kind of the precipice of what led me to all of this. Because I played Black Myth Wukong and that game sucked, okay? I'm just gonna be real, that game was mid. It had fancy graphics and that's about it. Otherwise, the combat was mid. The animations that you had to wait for for your character were very slow and cumbersome. And uh, I kept thinking, OK, well, there's got to be a reason that this game is blowing up other than it just being popular in China. And then guess what? Uh, I ended up watching a speed run of the game. I forced myself to watch a speed run because I wanted to see what is it that I'm missing. But I didn't want to play the game myself. And uh, yeah, I've come to the conclusion, I was right, that game sucks. You know it's bad when even the speedrunner was bad-mouthing the game and talking about how there's like very little option for like different ways of playing the game. And I mean, I'm not trying to throw shade on anybody who enjoys the game or anything like that, but it's more so like, you gotta understand when it comes to being like, where, where my job is like being social and being, you know, a... Uh, content creator, as it were. We got to be very careful about what we say, like you see in my reviews and stuff. Like, I, I, I know that there's a part of me that can be very, very blunt and harsh. And that's something that I've kind of slowly worked on in myself is to not just say, hey, you're stupid if you like this kind of thing. But at the same time, I feel like it's gone a little too far in the one direction where now I'm like scared to share my honest opinion about certain things, like just saying, I think Wukong sucks, you know? And I mean, again, it's like, you can go ahead and enjoy the game for, you know, people love that game and whatever. They got bad taste in video games, but sure, whatever. That's cool, I don't care, your opinion is your own. And so that kind of, you know, having that thought process, it started to kind of blossom into this idea of, oh, I should do this with like everything. And I should be like, 
I should just be more confident in my own opinion about things because at the end of the day, this is my channel. And, you know, I, I don't mean to say this as egotistical as it's gonna sound, but I just don't know how else to say it. My channel, my rules, you don't like it, you can go blow because there's a billion other YouTubers out there that'll end up having the same robot opinion as everybody else anyways. And at the very least, if there's one thing I know about myself growing up, I've got this punk rock attitude. The main thing is trying to kind of straddle the line like within myself of, okay, I can have this punk rock attitude, but I shouldn't just be mean spirited. And that kind of is like the biggest thing that's been a huge hurdle in my life because I am very, very prone to rage. <laughs> I've realized just how unhappy I am when I end up like getting really pissed off and just kind of like being so in that moment where all I see is red. I, I feel like I'm kind of leveling up as a person, which is surprising to me because I thought that I'd already fully grown up. You know, there was this point where I thought, okay, I guess I can't get any cooler. <laughs> yes, I can. Let's be real, it's all coming up because I think it's a natural instinct of becoming a father where I'm just realizing, oh, there's these emotions that I don't want to pass on. I know the idea of like trying to be a perfect parent is like impossible. And I'm gonna just be me and do the best that I can. And there's gonna be parts of me that my child will grow up and hate. Like all of us hate certain aspects of our parents. But a thing that I learned a long time ago, uh, you know, is to not hold that against your parents and instead just hold it against yourself. Because the only people that, you know, the only person that you can control is yourself. And, and that said, you know, I'm also quite intelligent, despite the fact that I play being an idiot. I'm actually like a genius. I have like 250 IQ, I think, or something like that, which is obvious. I mean, look at me. I'm playing Trove successfully for my career for many years. It's not like I want to play other games at all. Nope, not at all. You know, I, it, it's kind of like just being more honest with myself and being more honest with you guys and just just treating it like it is like it's like Life is such a big joke and there's no reason to take things so seriously and get like so upset about certain things.